Hi everyone, I'm Nick, and this is the new Amazon Fire TV Stick with Alexa voice remote. The original Fire TV Stick was released two years ago, and it was a huge hit. It was an amazing deal for only $39, but since then, the Fire TV Stick has shown its age, coming up short when it comes to performance. But Amazon just released a second generation of Fire TV Stick that bumps up the specs, and they've added the Alexa voice remote, while keeping the price the same as it was two years ago. You can pick up the new Fire TV Stick from Amazon for just $39. I'll put a link below if you'd like to check it out. Inside of the box you'll get the Fire TV Stick, which looks almost identical to the original, but now it's slightly larger. The Fire TV Stick now comes with the Alexa voice remote, and here it is compared to the basic remote that you used to get that didn't have the mic for voice search. You also get an HDMI extender cable in case you don't have enough room for the stick in your setup. There are two AAA batteries for the remote, as well as a USB cable and power adapter. If your TV has a USB port, you can use that to power the stick, otherwise you can use the power adapter. If you use the USB port, it'll power the stick down each time you turn your TV off, and it'll have to boot the device each time you turn it on. If you go with the power adapter, it'll just go to sleep each time. Lastly, you'll get some documentation that includes a quick start guide. When it comes to the specs, Amazon upgraded the processor and the GPU. The Fire TV Stick is now running a 1.3 GHz quad-core processor versus the 1 GHz dual-core processor of the original, and the difference in performance is noticeable. Unfortunately, they didn't upgrade the RAM, it still has only 1 GB like the original. It does have 8 GB of internal storage though, which gives you about 6 GB of usable space. After downloading all the apps I use, as well as a handful of games, I still had around 4 GB free. They've also upgraded the Wi-Fi, it now supports the newer 802.11 AC routers, so if you've got one of those, you should get a more reliable signal. The Fire TV Stick will output video at 1080p at up to 60 frames per second, but you'll find some apps like PlayStation View or YouTube will only put out 30 frames per second. It'll also output Dolby Digital Surround Sound, and I had no issues getting 5.1 channels with my receiver. Stepping up to the Fire TV, which goes for $89 at the moment, will give you 4K output and snappier performance across the board due to its better processor and more RAM. It also comes with a microSD slot to expand the storage. With the Fire TV Stick, you'll have access to a ton of apps including Netflix, Hulu, HBO Now, Sling, and PlayStation View. The only app that I wish they had was Vudu, which I use to watch ultraviolet copies of Blu-rays that I purchase. Google Movies isn't available either, but the Fire TV Stick really works best if you have an Amazon Prime subscription. The majority of the content that you'll see on the home screen is Amazon's own content, although they have been getting better. For example, now they'll display Netflix recommendations. But as you browse through the movies and TV shows, most of what you see is going to be Prime content. Browsing the menus is very smooth, and it's a nice improvement over the original. You'll rarely see any stuttering. Amazon's content will start buffering before you choose to play, so movies and shows will begin quickly. And if you are watching Amazon's content, there's a feature called X-Ray, Pressing up on the remote will bring it up. It'll display the actors in the current scene. You can skip to different scenes, view the cast, see what music's being played, or view trivia. Usually I'll grab my iPad and bring up IMDb whenever I want to see who a certain actor is or who is voicing a certain character. So this is a cool feature that I'd like to see more services do. Netflix performance is good here too. It's smooth to browse and the content begins playing as fast as any other device I have. One of the worst performing apps on the original Fire TV Stick was PlayStation View. It's greatly improved here. It's still not as fast as the more powerful Fire TV, but it's a much better experience, even though it is capped at 30 frames per second. I'd also find that Spotify can stutter sometimes, but overall it's smooth and works really well. There's no way to customize the home screen. It would be nice to be able to place favorite apps at the top, but right now it just displays the most recent content. There's also a huge ad at the top, which bugs me. Sometimes it's for a show or movie, but sometimes it's just for products on Amazon. But overall I do really like the layout and everything is well organized. The other new feature of the Fire TV Stick is the Alexa voice remote. Holding down the voice button, you can ask what's the weather? Currently, in Carroll Stream it's 44 degrees with cloudy skies. You can shop for items on Amazon. You could use it to play music, or watch a show. It works perfectly with Amazon's content, so you can say things like, play Interstellar. Or, start over. 
Alexa also works with other content too, but it's not integrated as well. So you could say play Daredevil, and it'll bring up the option to start watching it on Netflix. But if you ask it to fast forward, it won't work. Same goes for Spotify. Alexa works perfectly with Amazon's music, but it won't do anything for Spotify. The Fire TV Stick is capable of playing games too. There really aren't too many good games, but they do have some popular ones. Games like Crossy Road and Pac-Man 256 work great. Although games can take a bit to load. I was surprised to see how well 3D games worked. Impulse GP loaded quickly and it played really smooth. You can buy a dedicated game controller from Amazon, but I was able to play simple games like these with just the remote, which worked just fine. There's also an app you can download that'll let you use your phone as a remote. If you have multiple Fire TVs in your house, it'll let you choose which one you want to control. You'll find all the buttons from the remote here, as well as the keyboard to enter text. It comes in really handy when you have to enter a username or password. And it makes searching for an artist or album in Spotify much easier. But it won't work in all apps. You can swipe around the screen to move, and tap to select. And there's a favorite section that you can use to add shortcuts for your most used apps. And there's even a mic, which you can pull down to use voice search. The Fire TV Stick will also function similar to a Chromecast, so you can cast video from YouTube or Netflix from your phone. I find it easiest to browse YouTube videos on my phone, and then hit the cast button to send it to the Fire TV Stick. There are also some parental features that'll restrict viewing, and you can add a pin to block purchases. So if you have children, they won't accidentally start purchasing TV shows, which is handy because sometimes paid content is mixed in with free content. So while you really get the most out of it if you have a Prime subscription, the Fire TV Stick is a huge improvement over the original, and it's really the best inexpensive streaming stick in my opinion. I also had the latest Roku streaming stick, and even though the performance is great, I'm not a fan of the bland interface, and certain apps like Amazon and PlayStation View don't have the same polish that they do on the Fire TV devices. If you're looking for 4K content or the best performance for the PlayStation View app, then I'd go with the $89 Fire TV, but for almost everyone else, the Fire TV Stick is a great choice, even if you aren't an Amazon Prime member. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button if you found this helpful, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.